Expectations were always going to be high for an eight-part historical drama, produced by Canal Plus and BBC, about the famous French monarch Marie Antoinette, and shot at the palaces of Versailles and Fontainebleau. This anticipation was only going to heighten when the performance sparked controversy for being obscene and feminist, and received backlash from some historians. Marie Antoinette, the new series, never quite lives up to its scandalous promise. This slightly fusty series' actuality differs greatly from all the hype surrounding it, which may unfairly predispose viewers to finding the new show unsatisfying. The opening scene of Marie Antoinette's eighth episode features the king and queen joining the rest of the royal court in celebrating the new year. The queen doesn't seem to be interested in Charter's flirty comments this time, despite the fact that he appears to be flirting with her. The king is envious when the queen encounters Count Axel Conferson, whom she had previously encountered and danced with in Paris. They have a few friendly exchanges, some of which have flirtatious overtones. While speaking with the count, the king sees the queen blushing, and he seems upset. A representative of the English administration named Stormont converses with Provence. He warns Provence that American insurgents are using French weapons to mutilate and kill English troops. He makes the implication that the French government is arming the Americans. Then he suggests that it be stopped and encourages Provence to bring it up with King Louis. King and the Count Morpas are preparing for war with England as a result of their support for the Americans. The Count is pleased when the King continues by outlining his plan to him after that. The King and Queen engage in sexual activity, but it all seems very artificial and unromantic. While engaging in sexual activity, the Queen is considering the Petit Tranon. To deliver an heir to the throne appears to be their only objective. The king then proposes that the queen take their daughter to Petit Tranon when the war starts. The queen responds that she can't wait when the king questions if they should have sex the following day. The royal household is informed by Provence of the king's plan to wage war against England. Josephine, Provence's wife, counsels him to shout the warning to the king so that if the king ignores it, he will regard him as a trustworthy person. The king is then questioned by Provence about why he is at war with England. Because he doesn't want to discuss personal issues with Provence, the king declines to acknowledge it. The king then makes him feel inferior and dispatches him. The diplomat tells the queen that her mother, the empress, misses her and wants to pay her a visit. The queen asks him to give her a portrait, instead because she doesn't want to see her mother without a son. The American ambassador to France, Benjamin Franklin, talks with members of the royal court. While Provence and Stormont disagree with the king's choice to support America by opposing England, the king appears to be favoring him. Lambal makes the queen a visit and requests assistance in getting ready for their transfer to the Petit Tranon. The queen informs her that Yoland is in control of everything, and she doesn't need to take any action. Lambal, who is obviously agitated, claims that it is her duty. Lambal then asks the queen to pick between Yoland and her. When the queen declines, Lambal turns and leaves. The king receives Count Morpus in his study. The king then asks him for advice on whether to permit his wife to withdraw 250,000 livres from the Preby purse to pay the Polignic's obligations. The count counsels him to let the queen govern the nation while she manages her own household. Lambal leaves the mansion with the excuse that she needs to unwind and is heading to a spa. The ambassador understands what is happening and feels for her. She responds that she doesn't believe the situation will change when he requests if he can write to her if things change. The queen asks Count Furson to a celebration at the Petit Tranon the following evening through Yoland. When he gets there, the queen is obviously drawn to him, and they have a moment that makes Chartres uncomfortable. The diplomat is seen trying to get in touch with the queen to convey instructions from the empress to avoid hanging out with the inappropriate company she is currently hanging out with. The diplomat is conscious that Yoland consistently seems to keep the queen's messages, though. The empress' condition, meanwhile, seems to be getting worse every day. The diplomat personally gives the empress messages after sneaking in one night, but the queen ignores her warnings. The queen is seen getting close to Count Furson at the Petit Tranon, where they even smooch, while the king and Chargers are at war. Yolan chooses to speak with the king after the queen refuses to grant her and her two men access to the lovely county of Beach. Informing Antoinette of their victory over England, Chargers pays her a late-night visit. Then he can be seen trying to impose himself on her and even slapping her. Consequently, Antoinette requests that he leave. The crowd cheers the king for his victory over England as he and the queen walk into the royal court the following morning hand in hand. Because Chartres abandoned his post before he was told to, the king dismisses him from the royal navy 
and tells him to leave Versailles. In order to ensure that the Queen comes back to him, he also dispatches Fersen to America. When the Queen learns that the Empress, her mother, has passed away, she cries in Lambal's embrace. The royal household bows to the King and Queen as the season draws to a close, and we learn that the King and Queen have another child, a boy. Despite the Queen being married, this show tries to romanticize her flirting and liaisons. Although it is understandable that the Queen did not want to marry Louis, she had come to adore him. It's unfortunate that the show went in that direction, given how fantastic it had been up until this moment. They shouldn't have romanticized it, but at the very least, they could have shown the Queen wandering. The show's conclusion also seems hurried. The storyline about the Queen having a son needed to be covered in a separate episode. The season was entertaining overall, and fans of historical dramas should watch it without a doubt.